Michigan's rock station, Q106. Hey, I'm Q106's Terry Stevens. Capital City Comic Con is coming back to the Lansing Center in downtown Lansing, June 30th through July 2nd. Once again, it has a star-studded lineup of geek culture celebrities. We're going to be talking to them in the weeks leading up to the big show. Our guest this time around, he's been the voice of some of your favorite characters from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Yu-Gi-Oh! Greg Abbey. Q106, what's your name? Where are you from? Hey, Abby, I'm calling you about the Cap City Comic Con coming up in July. Greg Abbey, hey, Terry Stevens from Q106. Great to have you on the show again, man. Looking forward to hanging again at Capital City Comic Con, June 30th, July 2nd, in the Lansing Center in downtown Lansing. Yep. So, Greg, you were here last year. What was your favorite thing uh, about visiting our thriving metropolis? Uh, there is a couple, and now I'm getting, the names escape me, but I went to a couple of very good restaurants because I, I knew there were some new ones kind of popping up as they're sort of revitalizing the area. So that and, 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 my, and my two friends who are also voice actors are with me or more, more comic book nerds. So I couldn't get them to go to the baseball stadium. That's right there that I was dying. Cause they're, so what do you, do you guys have a triple a team there? Yeah, man. These lug nuts. They are the, uh, they're franchise connected to the Oakland A's or well, what might be the no, Oakland Las A's. <laughs> yeah. I think that's, I think that time has passed, but anyway, I'm hoping to get to the stadium on this trip. There you go, man. There you go. Lug nuts are always a good time, and it's always funny to say D's lug nuts. I'm not sure if the lug nuts <laughs> like it when I say that, but... Yeah, that's right. It's kind of sitting there for you anyway. Yeah, ex- exactly. You, you can't serve up a softball like that and not expect me to swing for it. I'm just saying. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Well, uh, Greg, um, I, so we, we talked a lot about your work as, uh, you know, playing the role of Tristan Taylor and Yu-Gi-Oh! and Raphael yep. and Teenage Mutant Ninja right. Turtles. And people can go back and listen to the, our, our first conversation about that. Yeah, but yeah. I, I discovered some things between last year and this year. It is my understanding oh, that you have run 11 freaking marathons. Well, yeah. And, and if I made humble brag, I'm up to thir- 13 now I've run. Greg, what are you running from? I'm insane. It's my childhood? I'm not sure. Uh, you know, it's funny is my wife runs them too, and we we kind of discovered them as a way to get away from our three children, and it seemed reasonable. Like, hey, we're going to go run a marathon. So that seemed like a legitimate excuse. So we've run – so we started traveling. So we've run London, uh, Paris, Amsterdam. We did Berlin. Uh, and we're hoping to do Tokyo, and then I'm I'm retiring. My body is my body is telling me to stop. So, yeah, what what made you decide? You know, it seems like a great way to spend my time. I, I would like to just <laughs> run non because, like, dude, my boss told me when I got hired here, my boss was like, "Bro, we have a four hundred one k here," and I told him, "Bro, I can't run that far. That ain't gonna happen." <laughs> so, like, what what inspires a guy to do that? Well, you know, I was about to turn forty, and my wife said, "You know." I was kind of a very casual runner just to kind of try to keep in shape. And she said, you know, we should run. I live in New York city. So she said, you know, we should, you should do the New York city marathon for your 40th birthday. And being a good husband, I did what she told me. And then I kind of got the bug only because, you know, you feel so good during the training. You feel physically good. You feel mentally good. I found like a pretty cool community of guys that I started kind of training with. And then, so we were doing like once one a year. And I think it's that, I think it's like, for me, it's like, I don't take antidepressants, but it's, it's a nice like mood enhancer. Like I always feel good after I run. And, and so, yeah, I just kept, it's been about 10 years now. We've averaged, I mean, my wife of course is two ahead of me. She's done 15. Um, and she's actually fast enough. She's qualified for Boston. So yeah, it's just, and when it's been this thing that she and I have been able to share, even though we don't really, we don't run together. Uh, we don't train together, but it's been this this thing that we could talk about in our relationship. And then, like I said, we've taken these kind of amazing trips together, uh, you know, around Europe. It's been awesome. Yeah, that's very cool, man. And, and yeah, the, the chemistry of it, that endorphin rush, that is uh, yeah. that that is pretty unmesswithable, man. That, there's nothing else like it. Yeah, I will say, like, you're in the middle of an 18-mile training run, I mean, a lot of times you feel like crap, but there are also moments where you feel like, oh, my God, I can accomplish anything. I mean, that usually dissipates by the end of the run, but there's always a little bit that stays there. So, I mean, believe me, I think I got addicted to the endorphins as well. So that's so that's a big part of it.
There you go. Now, while you may be considering retiring from the marathon career, of course, the voice work is still there, man. And I get a lot of questions from people, especially with the way the economy has shifted and people are looking for other ways to make money. And now you've got you've got things like Fiverr and voices and all that stuff. So as somebody who's been in this game for a minute, what's your advice to people who are looking to get into voiceover work? I mean, I always, the first thing I always tell people is to take an acting class because even though it's, it's voice work, if you're trained as an actor, you're going to be 10 steps ahead. Or even if you take a voice, you know, there's, there's even classes online now for animation voice work or voiceover class. So I, I definitely think you need some training because there, it has gotten, it's like everything else. It's gotten easier, but it's also gotten harder. It's gotten easier because you can get a pretty decent microphone for cheap and work from home. But there's a lot of people doing it, like Voices.com. Like there's a ton of people submitting. So if you are going to do that, I say take classes, and then you have to grind like every day, be putting up auditions. You have to get used to rejection because that's 95% of this business. And then I think if you really, really want to do it, you you really have to be in, uh, you know, certainly New York or L.A. I know Chicago has a pretty big voiceover scene and, and every major city has a little bit of voiceover but if you're like i want to i want to do this as a career i think you have to be in la or new york la has most of the animation so if, if that's your thing video games um i mean it's gotten where you if you have an agent you can kind of be anywhere but anyway that's that's what i usually tell people the main thing is to, is to take a class because it's like any other job you can't just oh yeah i'm into this i'm just gonna start like you you need some training Yeah, absolutely. There's, um, I, you know, I (laughs) doing what I do for a living. I've met a few people and they're like, yeah, people tell me I got a great voice for radio. And it's like, it's not just the voice, homie. You gotta, you gotta have the inflection, the personality there. There's a lot, there's some cats that I've worked with that I describe as all pipes, no wit. Like, yeah, yeah, right. you, you got to have that spark that's in there. So when I first got into this, um, you know, we went through like vocal training exercises and things. Sure. And what, one of the things right. my instructors told me was to, uh, as you're driving, read billboards out loud and try different inflections. Sure. And so do you ever find yourself, tra- you know, when you're getting ready to do a VO, do you find yourself like reading odd copy and your character's voice? <laughs> Uh, I mean, not really anymore. I think certainly when I, when I started, I did more of that. And, you know, I would also tell young actors, like, listen to radio ads, write down the copy, you know, practice them, like get a sense of what's out there, get a sense of what, you know, your, your voice match might be. So you understand maybe what's, what's in the industry, you know, and for me these days, I don't really do too much. I mean, I just did an audio book this week, actually down at Audible. So I'll definitely warm up my voice, but in terms of the character stuff, certainly characters I've done before, I can get into it pretty quickly. But yeah, you mostly just want to you want to be warmed up so you don't go in go in cold, you know. Uh, follow up to that: Have you ever done karaoke in one of your characters' voices? <laughs> you know what? I actually love to sing, and I've done some Broadway musicals. I've never uh, not Broadway musicals. I've done a lot of musicals though, but I've never done karaoke never wow man wow i I feel like that's the thing we need to make happen at capital city comic-con i've seen like table reads and that sort of thing before i think we need i think we need character i think that needs to be a thing (laughs) i i think i'm i think that would be great i think we have to have like a picture of margaritas maybe standing by as part of it Could well, we do? Could we make that work? But perhaps. I'm going to talk to the crew. I'm going to talk to Wesley and the Crushers and see if they can provide backup okay. music. I think that should be a okay. thing, my dude. <laughs> I, I'd be into it. I'll do. I'll do Raphael from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles doing a Billy Joel song. How about that? Absolutely. I think Raphael could probably pull off Disturbs down with the sickness too. Seems like he's got the the heft, the gravitas for that. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Well, Greg, we are looking forward to hanging with you and everybody else. June 30th through July 2nd, Lansing Center in downtown Lansing, Capital City Comic Con. Dude, thank you so much for checking in with us again. We'll see you in a few weeks. Yeah, man. It's my pleasure. I'll see you guys soon. Looking forward to it. You got it, man. Be well. Take care. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. Michigan's Rock Station, Q106.